So the object of um, this short presentation is um, just to share some of my thoughts and ideas about the future, not just of Joomla, but um, of the internet and the way it's going to go. The idea of predicting the future is very, very difficult. Um, if you remember yesterday, I said that it was going to go to penalties in the football, and it did. So I got that bit right. But Chelsea won, and I said they would lose, so I got that bit wrong. So predicting the future is hard. Um, I'm still waiting to get my hoverboard. Um, I have ordered it. Hasbro uh, are supposed to be shipping their first hoverboards in December this year. Um, they made us pay in March last year for it. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how does it actually hover. I suspect it's got some wheels underneath it, which are a little bit transparent. So predicting the future is very difficult. I am a sucker for gadgets. Does anybody remember this watch? Okay, I have this watch. It's a Timex data link. It came out in the early 90s. Um, it was a joint project between Timex and Microsoft. It had an amazing feature. It could actually get all your appointments and all your birthdays and your telephone numbers onto your, from your computer onto your watch without any cables. It did have a huge memory of 16 characters for each record, so it wasn't a lot of information. Um, it was so popular that actually it went up into the space station and it was given to all the space shuttle crew. Um, they all used it. Um, you can't buy these now. The main reason is the way that it transferred the data from the computer to the watch was you held the watch up at the computer screen, the computer screen flashed, and the data was transferred. Slight problem today. Flat screens do not flash as quickly as a CRT tube. So as soon as we got brand, so now of course we could get a lot more data in the, in the watch itself, but we can't flash the, our laptops to get the data on. So this watch is now absolutely dead, so it's stuck in my cupboard, along with lots of other gadgets. I'm a sucker for them. I've got a keyboard that's a laser keyboard. It projects on the table. It's really good doesn't have function keys. <laughs> but I can type really fast. Yeah, it does hurt your hand because you're bashing away at the table. Um, so there's, there's lots of gadgets and I am a bit, of, a bit of a sucker for them. One of the things I've, I've learned is that some of the gadgets that look really good and work really well, they just disappear like this one because the underlying technology has changed. Sometimes it's because we've we get better in one thing, it means we move back on something else. So all these things that you think they're going to be the future, they're going to be the way we're going to move forward, suddenly something else comes along and it breaks the whole thing. So it's very difficult to predict the future. Now if Elvis, if Elvis was alive today, if he came out of Hotel Grunwald at the end of the street and came here to uh, uh, Bad Neuheim in, in 2012, most things he's going to see are not really that different. The cars are a little bit rounder, a bit bigger. The biggest thing that he's going to see that's changed is we're all holding little handheld device, little handheld black boxes, and we're talking into them. But that's not going to surprise him that much because science fiction movies like Dick Tracy and things like that have always had mobile communications, little boxes with TV screens. So that's not going to surprise him too much. The biggest surprise, of course, would be the computer. Um, Back in, back in the 50s, of course, IBM famously said, who are, who's gonna, there's only going to be five customers for a computer in the world. I've got five here with me, so um, I'm their one customer. So obviously, people get things, get things slightly wrong. I want to um, just wake everybody up a little bit. Um, can everybody stand up? OK. Now, you can sit down if you didn't build a website this year. Okay, you can sit down if you didn't build a website last year. Okay, if you didn't build a website in 2010, sit down. 2009, 
2001, 2000, 1999. <laughs> Were you alive in 1999? Uh, 1998, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92. Okay, so 1992 was the last one. That, uh, Elon was 92 and Chris was 93. 93? Yeah, it was 1993. So the internet is really young. It's only 10 years old in real terms. That's pretty amazing. I'm talking about Joomla in 2102. Yeah? We're still, the, the web is still in its absolute infancy. So is computing. So what, we, how can we even guess? In 92, could you have dreamed, Elon, of building a database-driven website? Yeah? Could you have dreamed, could you have dreamed of building a website that could grab information from another website? You know, all those things which we take for granted today didn't happen just 10 years ago. So it's all very new, and so things are going to change quite a lot. Um, this is my first portable computer. Um, it's a compact luggable. Um, I actually, I have it, or I had it, it was in the loft at a friend's house. And I was very, very tempted to pack it up and bring it. Unfortunately, when I rang him up, he did say that he'd cleaned out the loft last year and he couldn't get in touch with me, so he threw it away. Um, but that was my first portable computer. Um, is this my last computer? Yeah? Is this, is this the final format of a computer? I don't know. Um, one thing, obviously, we can see is they're getting smaller. So, the future of the web, there's some keywords and some things that there. Those are all the things that we, we're approaching today um, that are changing the way that we work with computers. Computers, one of the great things about the mobile phone, or the worst thing about the mobile phone, is that it's freed us from the desk. Yeah, people can reach us anywhere. The laptop computer and the battery power of it means that I work from Starbucks every day. Yeah? It's completely changed the way that we live, and maybe it's going to change the way that we live in, way, in the future in ways that we cannot imagine. So my first prediction is we're going to start doing something called life logging. So what is life logging? We're going to be re recording everything we say, everything we see, everything we read, and it will be logged yeah, with metadata, and it will be searchable, and everything else like that. Now, how are you going to actually go about recording the video? Well, this is a device that's available now. It's called the Luxie. Um, that's actually version one. Version two is a little bit smaller. Uh, Luxy records on a four-hour four loop everything that you see. Right now, because of bandwidth restrictions, the only way you can upload, you only upload the bit that you want. You just press a little button. It rewinds and uploads the last five minutes via your telephone onto YouTube. Yeah, so that's available now, but that's just sort of five minutes worth. The reason why it's only five minutes is because of data storage. Data storage is getting m cheaper and larger every single day. Yeah, w when we started Mambo, and when we were packaging up the zip file, we had a rule that it had to be able to fit on a 1.44 megabyte floppy. The Apple logo today will, could not be stored on the Apple IIe computer. It's bigger than the memory on the Apple II computer. So the data storage is getting bigger and bigger all the time. Now, one of the proposals and thoughts right now is that we're going to be able to store data in diamonds. Yeah, it's called the memory diamond. 3.5 cc's of a diamond, I think that's a lot bigger than that, will store 13,000 terabytes of data. Now, yesterday, um, Oliver was talking about storing petabytes of data in hundreds and hundreds of cabinets. Yeah? Maybe he'll be able to store it on his ring. I mean, no more USB sticks. You, you know, your diamond ring can store everything. So how much is 13,000 terabytes? Well, 
in that 13,000 terabytes, you'd be able to store 370 times 10 to the power of 16 copies of the Library of Congress. You'd also be able to store 4.2 times 10 to the power of 12 movies. 30 times 10 to the power of 12 CD albums. So it's, it's data storage very soon is not going to be an issue. It's not going to be something that, comes at, that uh, becomes part of our life. It's not going to be something we think about. Yeah, okay. Mr. Bremer has spotted that this photo has a, a CD with an embarrassing title. <laughs> Must be something about Mr. Bremer here on the front row that just his eyes get drawn to certain four letter words. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's two of you. So, in terms of recording what we, what we say, the average person actually only speaks about 5,000 words a day. I did say the average person, obviously I speak a lot more than that, but some people speak less. And we actually read on a maximum of about 50,000 words a day. So to log our entire life, we can actually do it in a half carat diamond. Everything we see, everything we read, everything we say. So if once we start being able to do that, that's going to make lo logging our life much, much easier. But what about where we go? Well, this is a mobile phone app. It's available on the, uh, on the Apple Store right now. It was released last week. It's called Place Me. And what it does is it's a GPS thing that sits, it's running in the background all the time, and it logs absolutely everywhere that you go and how long you stay there. And then you can even plot all your data on a map and see the route that you took, see how long you were at places and things like that. Now obviously there's quite a scary idea, you can buy a very, very cheap GPS enabled mobile phone, you can stick it in your partner's uh, bag and see who it is that they're seeing when they're not with you. So maybe there's data um, protection and uh, security issues, but that's available right now. So all this sort of stuff, it, we, we've got it now but maybe we've not worked out quite how the best way to use it. So that's as I said, the in, your entire life, 65 milligrams of a, of a memory diamond. Yeah, it's really not very much. But what about the connection speed to the internet? Obviously we've got to upload all this data. When I first started using the internet, I had a 2400 board modem. I've now got 4.2 uh, megabit mobile connection. It's getting faster and faster every single day. Last week, some scientists in, uh, I think it was Korea, did the first test of terahertz Wi-Fi, which has a theoretical maximum of 100 gigabits a second. Their test only did 3.5 gigabits a second, but that was the very first test. So if you think about it, three and a half gigabits a second of data transfer. You know, that's full screen, high resolution video, and lots, lots, lots more. So the actual idea of having a limit on what we can do because of the upload speeds is gone. So all this is what's, technically it's here now, but there's definitely gonna be part of our future. One of the problems we have right now is we're all members of sites like this, Facebook, Orkut, Flickr, MySpace, Twitter, places like that. And that's where we go to share our data. So we actually have to go and we have to log in and post our data to one place. And if we want to post it to somewhere else, we have to log in again and post it to more. Doing J and Beyond, I was having to post everything to three different places. Yeah, Twitter, Google Groups, and Facebook. We're doing that because we're all going inside these gardens and they've all got walls and we can set up ways to post dynamically from one to the other. But why are we doing it on their websites? I predict that with the unlimited bandwidth, the unlimited data storage, we're going to be building websites in the future just for ourselves. And everything we do, we see and we log will go on our websites so the challenge for us in the future 
is working out ways of sharing that information, authenticating your friends so that they can see that, not having to use third-party sites like this. So in the future, we're going to be breaking down these walled gardens. If I was looking at buying those shares in the, in the Facebook IPO right now, I'd be looking at a five-year investment because I believe in five years' time we won't be using websites like Facebook because they won't offer anything to us because we can do it all on our own space. We can share directly with the people we want to share with, directly from our own website, and we'll be interacting like that. How that will happen, I don't know. But as we said before, 10 years ago, we never thought we could have a database-driven website. We never had CSS, so we couldn't even make it look nice. So in five years' time, who knows what we can do? Authentication tokens, sharing things. Who remembers the Bump app on their mobile phone? Yeah? Who used to use it? Do you still use it? Yeah, it was the hot app two years ago. Yeah? You walk up to someone, you want to share your contact details, you just bump your mobile phone to their mobile phone. It's gone. But there will be new ways of connecting people and exchanging tokens. So I believe that these walls will come crumbling down and that we won't even know what the children of uh, 2050 won't even know what Facebook is. Won't even exist to them. So my third prediction is how we actually get information onto our, it's not, a, it's not even going to be called a website anymore, it's not going to be called a computer, it's just how, we sh how do we create the content and how do we see the content. Everything has been getting smaller and smaller. I've always been a fan of small, in fact my computers are getting bigger because my previous ones had really tiny screens, but as I've got older my eyesight's got worse. So we've been getting them smaller and smaller, but we've got a limit that we can physically reach with the devices we have right now. Based on the, our eyesight, we can't see enough detail on those small screens, and we can't input the data because there's no, there's no way. The keys are too small, and we're used to inputting data with our fingers, which is an, you know, it's a digital thing. Sorry, that was a bit too subtle, but <laughs> I'm glad somebody got it. So, I believe that our screens are actually going to get bigger, not smaller, but we can't carry around an enormous screen, so how are we going to do it? Well, perhaps this is the way that it's going to be done. Uh, sorry, I, I, I took the audio track off because it's all in Japanese. But Google Glasses eat your heart out. This is a lot better. Yeah? How long do you think it's going to be before we're going to have the ability to have glasses like that? Will it even be glasses? Will it be contact lenses? So that you, know, you can do corrective eyesight and it will be projecting everything that we see. So if we now take away the limit of having to have a physical screen, we're reducing the size of our I don't even want to call it a computer, yeah, of our device, of our connection. So we've removed the site, so we've removed the screen, so how are we going to deal with actually inputting the data? So there's going to be new input devices as well. Oh. One possible input device will be the power of our mind. And the power of our mind is an amazing thing. We, we know a fraction of what our minds can do. I'm going to try a little experiment here. I'm going to show you an image. It's got three dots in it. I want you to stare at that image for 20 seconds. Then I'm going to turn the image off and I want you to blink very fast for about 10 seconds and then see what happens to the white screen. So if you just stare at the dots, And now if you blink and then stare at the screen. And hopefully that lady just appeared to you in full colour. 
Do you want to try it again? The key apparently is the blinking. Okay, so you've got to blink really fast. So we don't know what our mind can do, what the possibilities um, exist with our mind. And so maybe we're going to start controlling and communicating our devices with the power of our mind. There's a project right now called Sixth, I can't even say this, Sixth Sense. It's uh, run by uh, an Indian student who's now at MIT in the US. Um, it's a little bit clunky right now. He has these little bits of tape on his fingertips, which act as markers. He's got a camera and a projector. With Sixth Sense, he can break down the barriers between the virtual world and the real world. So what can it do? He can look at his airplane ticket. The camera will read the ticket. It will go. It will check the me metadata. It goes and checks the airline website, and it projects back on the ticket that it's delayed for 20 minutes. He can go into a, a bookstore, pick up a book. The camera sees the title. It goes online and it projects the, the star rating from Amazon. He can open the book. And on the inside page, he can see what his friends thought of the book, projected directly onto the book. And they can do this right now. Sixth Sense, there's lots of videos online um, showing exactly what, the, what he can do with it. So maybe this is something that's going to do, breaking down the barriers between the real and the virtual. Actually projecting the data we want to see where we want to see it. We're not going to have to open a device to do it. Maybe it's going to go on here instead of on the glasses. Who knows? Perhaps perhaps what we are going to do hmm? it's got a memory. Okay, so if anybody read the blog post that I wrote, scratch word, wrote, <laughs> about how to do a presentation, you will have seen that you never do a live demo. I'm using Dragon Dictate, which is incredibly cool and shows that it even knows how to spell Joomla. <laughs> and that wasn't me training it. Uh, that, um, the word Joomla wasn't trained, it is built into the Dragon Dictate Dictionary, spelt absolutely correctly. Um, it does work really well when you've not got these extra microphones and stuff. So, maybe we're going to be interacting with our computers using our voice. The honest answer is, I don't know what the future is. I don't know what Joomla's going to do in 2102. I think some of these things we're going to start to see. I think we're going to start to see some of them very, very soon. How soon? Let's wait. But just remember one thing. Brian is always right. <laughs> but even if I'm wrong, I can say 2102 because if I get it wrong, I'm not going to be here for you to, have a com to complain. And you know what? If for some reason I am alive in 2102, who cares? I'm alive! <laughs> so thanks very much. It was just a bit of fun. Um, 